Welcome to this edition of the Youth Roundtable where we converge uh, young people to discuss pertinent issues uh, in our democracy, in our governance, and in our collective future as Ugandans. Today we delve into one of the unknowns, as they say, unknowns do cause fears, and of, of recent the phenomenon of artificial intelligence, which is not actually very new technology, but has grown and expanded and become of general use in the last few years. We all recall the fears around the time when we first interfaced with Chat GPT and how it would impact our lives. We all recall the fears of inter election interference in the last cycle of elections, not just here in Africa, but globally, with worries around uh, Cambridge Analytica in the US, in Kenya, among others. We have all seen artificial intelligence images. We have all seen uh, artificial intelligence speeches. We are moving into an age where our politics, a lot of our political work, a lot of our political imagery, a lot of our political um, uh, strategies around image and how messages are passed on uh, will be coming through artificial intelligence. But that said, it's not just about generating content, but issues around security of, of, of elections, issues around cyber attacks, and among other fears. As Uganda, we are moving into the 2026 election cycle, which will put ourselves to test as to artificial intelligence. But perhaps we are too scared for nothing. Perhaps this is a positive development. And together with me today, we have a group of young panelists to break down for us whether we should be scared or we should be happy to welcome artificial intelligence and how maybe it will change the face of the upcoming elections. Or maybe it's too early to worry. Maybe it's some worry for 2031 or 2036. Our colleagues will be able to sell us. Uh, being a... Being a uh, a, a complex uh, topic, or an, let me say a novel topic, perhaps uh, it was prudent that we assemble a, t a team of uh, young but very capable and knowledgeable panelists, and I'll be introducing them right before we delve into the discussion. Starting from the far right, the gentleman there is Mr. Kisache Jibril, who is an ICT teacher. Kisache, you're most welcome. You can Thank greet you much. the viewers. Uh, good day to our viewers. Yes, thank you very much. We also have Eric Jaguara from Tufuna Technologies. You're most welcome, Eric. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be here today. Yes, mm -hmm. thank you very much. We also have Akel Odora from Copyright Institute of Uganda. You're most welcome. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am so happy to be here. Yes. And finally, we have uh, Mr. Muhindo Morgan from Arini to Peter and Company Advocates. You're most welcome. Thank you. Hello, our viewers. Happy to be here. Yes. Uh, starting from you, Eric, let's delve <laughs> right into it. If you were yeah. explaining to a young, a young child, in this case, I'm, I'm the young child, because <laughs> I have no education, mm. <laughs> um, how would you break it down for me? In a, in a few minutes, so that I understand, and maybe also briefly put it in the context of electoral politics. Mm. Yes. Uh, artificial intelligence, just as it sounds, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, you are giving um, whatever system, what it could be an app, it could be a machine, mm. ability to behave as a real human would have. It could be a in a particular task, but do it more with less what? Actually, say, not even less, but without human intervention. Mm. Mm? Uh, that is more of, in summary, giving it the ability to behave, really, take tasks more humanly as mm. possible, mm. and keeps on advancing each day. Artificial intelligence has been around for years. Yes, yes. But why is it now... Well, it's as old as the 60s? Yes. Mm. But why is it standing out right now? Because it's now getting too more humanly than what before. Mm. So um, another thing, what takes most people's attention right now is just a branch of AI, mm -hmm. which is the generative AI. Yes, yes. 
the one that is able to make content, the pictures, the voices, uh, eh? mm. that is the one that has really captured people's attention yes. most. Mm. And I think even could be the one that has really made us even gather today. Mm. So uh, how does AI work? It is trained on particular data. And now for the generative AI, creates new data, new content mm. that has never existed. But because it was trained on particular, let's just say it was trained on voices, mm. it can now create new voices that never really mm. existed before. Mm. And that is, I think, the particular one that has taken our attention, right? The chat GPTs. Eh? Mm. Uh -huh. Yes. So in summary, that is it. Yes. Mm. All right. Taking decisions that a human would have taken in a humanly way. Mm. Not hard coding. Back then when we used to hard code and tell a machine, do this. When this happens, do this. When mm. uh, mm. do this. Uh -uh. Yes. It, it itself will choose. And, mm, I think it's now getting hot. Mm. Turn on the lights. That kind of... Eh? Mm. Uh, and, hey. and maybe how, how does... How does that doesn't it? make sense, but I think you get that idea. Yes, <laughs> we do. We do. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, and how does artificial intelligence really um, matter? Mm. in politics because we know politics here is you 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 wake up you decide mm. a position you mm. party mm. you go and contest mm. you know um one thing i know about politics because i'm one is politi politics is a, a vampire of information mm. it, people consume mm. information and perhaps that's where it comes but you can tell us more how does artificial intelligence come in in electoral or in the politics of 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 yeah of uganda but also wider um for me what is if you to, should i talk about the threats the negatives because it is, it is really that is a what stands out right no, now we shall get into that <laughs> but is it relevant for, for politics? very very relevant it's really, really going to shake it it's really going to shake it mm. Mm. maybe it will yeah. shape it. <coughs> You can imagine if I want to stand uh, in a district called uh, Bundibujo mm. and there's a mm. constituents, uh, most of the politicians obviously rely on information. Mm. Mm. So they, they would want to know, for example, how many uh, voters do I have in my constituency? Yes, how do they behave? Mm. What are their preferences? Yes, mm. So if I am if I'm armed with such kind of information, then mm. it becomes very easy for me when, to make mm. decisions. Mm. But I can imagine the kind of guesswork that I've been going through relying on mm. word of mouth. Mm. That in order to get my point clear and also mm. my strategy clear, mm. I need to look for a particular old man who mm. understands the, mm. the, the, the political landscape, mm. including the behavior and so on. Mm. But with artificial intelligence, Obviously, we can argue whether that is effective or not in our context now. I've mm. given you an example of my constituency in mm. a place in Bundiwujo. That, that can be a debate later on. Mm. But again, mm. if I have that kind of data, let's assume mm. that we have that penetration of the technology and so on. Mm. If I have that kind of, of, of data, then I don't even need to go and look for this old man mm. to understand the fact. political landscape. I was trying area. to check the number of voters. Yes, okay. my area. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it should be able <laughs> to give you the land area. It should be able to give you the population, the topography, me, and all me, of that. It gave me a Google link. Yes. So mm. you, you, you may not have the time to read it now. Understand? Mm. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> so, so you, Bundy, I, Bundy, I, people need yeah. to. In add a general me. view of mm. influence, for me, I would now let me say. Uh, yeah. Remember, during elections, we're looking about uh, making posters, making videos. Mm. Talking about, you get those campaigns. Eh? Mm. So now, right now, AI is there. You don't need to pay uh, the, 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 the editors and what. So those video content creators, you could even do it just quickly. Think even just typing. Well, I think you use Meta AI for... Mm. You could just say, make for me a, 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 a picture of a, a girl doing this and this and this. The thing what? You don't need now to go photography, getting a model and... You see that, eh? mm. so it is going to help. So that is the, 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 the notable, outstanding something that is going to really help with. Uh, so with basically, the um, information, especially mm. with generative AI, uh, and I think we'll proceed with that. As, the as, speeches as to cover the area mm. of, of the use users mm. uh, before we get into some of the threats. Mm. 
So you're looking at basically information. Uh, because we have content. said, we mm. have said perhaps um, you know the posters uh -huh. can be auto generated. Mm. I think in in the threads we'll we'll get back to that mm. <laughs> because mm. it, it can it can be taken to the other side as well among mm. other issues. Um, Mr. Jibril, mm. how else do you think artificial intelligence can be a utility or? A part of uh, election process for individual politicians in Uganda. Um, I think that uh, the most important thing is that it gives uh, the people participating in the elections more confidence because it can be used to secure the systems where even the humans can't crack it. Mm. Yes, mm -hmm. like you could use blockchains and uh, integrate it with AI mm. with uh, encryption keys that even the people participating in the elections can't crack. So that gives you assurance that no one is what? Tampering. Mm. With the so you're now talking about um, votes, vote yes, protection, uh, vote, uh, assuring very, transparency. Yes, yes. Oh, interesting. But um, as because uh, for our viewers, maybe you can explain what <coughs> blockchain is in one. Uh, blockchain is simply a peer-to-peer -peer network where um, I would say transactions or actions are verified by a network of what? Different mm. computers. Mm. So it's simply volunteers mm. who offer their computing power mm. to verify transactions or actions. But do you network. think that mm. uh, Ugandans are ready for, because for us our vote security, our peer-to-peer -peer is campaign agents who uh, that's have what to I'm saying. You have that to send your agents to see one vote mm. and ensure that uh, you know your vote is safe. Mm. And upon counting your tally, you have your own tally uh, that finally you compare with the final results. Don't you think that? Do you think that Ugandans are ready to conceive things like you know blockchain, peer to peer, and encryption among mm. all of these? I think the political landscape right now. Uh, Ugandans have lost uh, confidence mm. in the authenticity of what is happening. So if <coughs> you give them another option, I think they could quickly adapt. Mm. Yes. Okay. Because they've already lost hope in what is around. Mm. 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 But that is subjective because <laughs> uh -uh. Ugandans participate in, in elections, mm. uh, they, they vote their MPs, mm. Mm. and they, the, the, the parliament is legitimate. The number of bylaws, uh, sorry, by elections are not mm. arising from election market practice, are not so a big percentage. But anyway, um, I understand where you're coming from, but I think we'll get uh, mm -hmm. deeper into that as well. I wanted to also give you a chance to delve into some of the utilities you see, uh, Dora, from AI. Okay, first of all, the opportunities that I see in AI, first of all, uh, is us working faster. Mm. Like, for example, when it comes to campaigns, mm. you can easily generate, as you said, yes. and have your, your, your cards ready and have uh, your article posters ready. Mm. Then also you can easily interact with your, your, your fans or the people who like, are your voters. Mm. Yes. Of course, that comes with a, with a problem mm. also. It's mm. still in there. Then another important thing is that, uh, as you said, security. Mm. Yeah, you can be assured that there's security. And in, in our history, we have heard of people being beaten when they go to, to actually count those votes. Mm. We have heard of people manipulating uh, votes. Like, for example, when, you can, when they're counting, they had for some other people. Then the others are not added. So with AI, they can easily monitor. So because they can also, AI can detect mm. uh, any activities mm. which are unusual. Mm. So like, for example, we, like where you have someone uh, trying to manipulate the system mm. to have their votes increase. So with AI, it would be easy for us to detect that. And also, they will reduce on the rate of violence when it comes to election. Because oh. we won't be having people being physical, like trying to do some of these things physically. Because mm. when we have a system, 
like where people can go and just vote without necessarily being in the place, like in that same place, trust me, it's, it's going to be easier mm. for the rest of Uganda. However, when you look at the other side of it, I don't think when it comes to the, our next election, I don't think we are ready as a country because mm. especially like when it comes to We are going to get to, to how yeah. adaptable it is. Mm -hmm. um, I think we, we, we have a fairly, and our viewers have a fairly good picture mm. of how AI can support in terms of generating information, mm. in terms of uh, generating uh, uh, imagery, mm. in terms of potential for, for security, security mm. among other items. I wanted us to get first into the threats, mm. after which we, our viewers can gauge whether it's a net good or or mm -hmm. bad, and then we can look into adaption where I think she was, she was delving into. Um, Mr. Eric, yes, please. we saw in the previous elections in, mm. the, in 20, 2016 mm. in Kenya, sorry, in, in, uh, in, the, in the US, and mm. I think uh, 2017 elections in, in Kenya, mm. uh, where we had the role of technology. Mm. in the electoral processes, in altering minds mm. uh, and determining the imagery uh, of, of uh, the, the, the viewers see and mani uh, manipulating them towards a certain direction mm. uh, that led to the close of one company called Cambridge Analytica. Yes, I think yes. you followed that mm -hmm. incident. Uh, don't you think artificial intelligence mm. uh, with all the servers being in the US, mm. uh, the controls and all of the information. For example, the, there's evidence that mm. uh, Chat GPT has racial biases. Mm. Uh, okay? So all <laughs> these, all these, you know, we, we don't have the best uh, back-end control mm. of these technologies. But don't, don't you think this is a tool to manipulate Ugandan minds? Uh, towards a particular view, a particular candidate, uh, and may possibly even a tool of foreign interference in our elections. Mm, yes, that is that is really that is really a, 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 a big what. Actually, there have been various campaigns. Eh? Mm. Actually, I also I took part in that training with under Microsoft uh, responsible AI. Mm. I am a, I'm a trainer of mm. responsible AI. And about it, it is trying to, the aim was to, to counter those biases. Mm. Biases, that's what you're calling, uh, what that is all part of bias. Mm. That manipulating and what, eh? Uh, there's biases, like for example, especially now on ladies, say that ladies are supposed to be the weaklings or something, you get that yes, kind of biases. Yes. Eh? Africans are for, these. For purposes of the viewers, mm. most of the content on, on, on AI is mm. still fed in by all humans so uh, the problem all comes right from the data itself you're using mm. because the data is first of all if you're getting out data from uganda mm. along that data comes all our biases in community so it's garbage in yes garbage so out. whatever you're training because i told you that the other thing whatever when you say ai mm. you're trying to teach it to behave as a human mm. if you're telling it that a human being in humanity a, a, an african is it will also take it that way. If you mm. tell it that a woman is, it will take it, a white is superior. It will take it that, that way. That way. Mm. So it comes right from the data mm. and how we train these models. Mm. Yes, you're talking about being centralized in the US, but not necessarily that. You can make, get, collect our data here, train models here, control them here. Mm. Just that now the outstanding uh, platforms, we know like ChatGPT, the Gemini are what? Mm. Uh, owned by those people. Reason being for them, they have already organized data. What well, you get, Google has collected them much from months, mm. and eh, that's why you see them outstanding. Mm. But that doesn't mean that everything has to be what we can also make our own mm. here. So in that data now, really, we need to, as uh, practitioners and what, we need to make sure we try to sieve. Eh? Mm what we give what how do we train this that uh, these models what do we train the, them with mm. get. but as you said for now we are basing on things of the americans of mm. course 
Mm. If they really want to mess us up, they will do that mm. for now. Okay. But we can make our own. Mm. And we have a lot of data, by the way. Mm. But just that we are not utilizing it. Mm. Like, for example, all these uh, district uh, headquarters, whatever. Most of the data is on papers there in files mm. packed. Mm. That could be data we could be using for training, is what? Models. In our context. Because mm. now whatever you're asking it, it is basing on the context of America, context of what, eh? But if we what, use our own? So you, you, you think we could actually develop um, an AI tool? Mm. Perhaps not for general information. I don't mm. think we're able to compete with Google. Mm -hmm. But for like U Uganda electoral process. It can be just because there are these... Uh, no, uh, yes, that because chat GPT is like a general purpose thing, eh? mm. but we can make particular for particular task mm. Mm. for a particular what task. task. Mm. Okay. But since elections are really close, I don't think we may do much. Mm. But over time, the best thing we could do is uh, digitizing all these local government things, uh, mm. data and what mm. everything, mm. and we could use that data and we make our own systems that could work. Mm. We have the data. Yes. Even just us speaking here as we are conversing, that mm. is also part of the data you yeah. can be used for yes, training. Yes, yes. This video we are making right now mm. is part of the data you can use to train a model. Mm. You get it? Eh? Mm. But is our data usable? Most mm. of it is written in files somewhere, eh? not recorded, mm. not. Eh? You go to a meeting, there are even no photos you have taken. Mm. It all goes that way. <laughs> mm. Thank you. And yeah. I, I, I hope. Uh, uh, CGT I mean, here is able mm -hmm. to 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 transcribe CSTV is able to transcribe uh, some of these for future use. I, th I think we have had a lot of talk here <laughs> that is nowhere. Uh, yes, uh, moving on to you, uh, Jibril. Uh, moving moving on with the topic regarding the threats uh, that we face with uh, artificial intelligence, as he has spoken as of now. Uh, we one we have no uh, system built on top of what is there existent. But what about um, the, the the actual the, the fact that all our ma all these machinery is 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 Western and it could be used perhaps to target mm. you know Ugandans towards a particular candidate in the upcoming elections. What do you think? Uh, I think generally. We, when we look at the electronic systems across the globe, uh, most of them are not controlled by the common men. Mm. These are things controlled by the minority. Mm. So, so it simply puts that these minority have power over what you can see, mm. over what you're consuming, the knowledge, everything. Mm. So it is very so simple. it's not new. It's not new. Mm -hmm. Because we uh, away from AI, mm -hmm. um, I think in the early 2000s, around 2006, uh, it, people raised concern about Facebook collecting their personal data. Mm -hmm. Then it came to Google. Then recently, it was the TikTok CEO who was invited mm -hmm. uh, to the, the Senate. to the Senate in the mm -hmm. US mm -hmm. to discuss the same issue of collecting personal data mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, the fact that they have all this data collected over like two decades now mm. shows that we as the common men really have nothing to do. Mm. So the best thing we can do is hope that governments implement laws to limit these huge corporations. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Or like his suggestion that mm. we have um, a more specific mm. uh, model built on top of what is there specifically for for us for us mm. and that can collect more accurate and like <coughs> local centric mm. data for just our local context right mm. yes all right um morgan you've been quiet are you threatened by the prospect of uh, artificial AI. intelligence in the 2026 elections Oh, we should be worried about 2036. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think my biggest worry is about the digital divide mm. that is caused by adoption of some mm. of these technologies. Mm. 
especially in a country like ours. Yeah, you're, you're, you're looking at the data that we have. I think we have around 56% uh, mm. of Ugandans who have no access mm. uh, to digital platforms mm. or rather to phones. Mm. So that shows you that you're in, you have all about 40 something percent of Ugandans who have phones. Mm. The implication of that is that if I have uh, an AI tool, most likely we don't have alternative views about it because you have a very small sample size of mm, your mm. population with, with access to these platforms. So you can imagine in every household you only have like one person with a phone mm. and it tells you that there is a, f that for example, there is a video of Bobby Wine calling uh, M7 this and that. Mm you all believe it because he's the only gentleman or lady with a phone in the household. Mm. You don't have an alternative <laughs> view over it. So those are some of the implications of, uh, of, uh, of, 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 of that big digital divide that you have. But do you think that, um, um, because one of the questions I had actually was around targeted companies uh, that are AI driven. Do, do you, don't you think that AI is a proficient propaganda tool? It depends on how you want to look at it. Mm. Just like any other tool, it can be used for the good and, and right. the bad. Yes, yes. AI, mm. in terms of targeted messaging, how efficient it is, I agree with you, and it can be a good thing in mm. an election. Mm. So that if I'm interested in technology and there is a specific policy on technology, for example, in a campaign, Mm. I should be able to follow it from all the all the candidates in the race. Mm. The way you see in uh, marketing, online marketing, that if I'm interested in gadgets, most likely I'm going to see ads related to mm. uh, gadgets. So the importance of that is that I can make an informed decision mm. basing on that tailored messaging mm. that is forwarded towards me. Mm. The, the only challenge is comes in when that tool is now manipulated mm. to sell a, a particular product. Now let's look at it in form of a message mm. in, uh, when it comes to electro processes. Mm. So if you're selling, a, if you're now manipulating me into buying an idea, then that's where it becomes bad. But and it's, 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 it's definitely uh, possible that... Y yes, obviously it is, it is possible that these tools can be used mm. for that. I think when you look at um, the, the some other platforms in the US for, 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 for elections where, where candidates are able to receive feedback. Mm. So when, for example, I put up a post and then you, you comment. Mm. When you comment, I can understand your preferences. Mm. Mm. Then from Is there... Is that what comes with the analytical? Yeah, yeah. Yes, exactly. Mm. So then I, after that, it doesn't mean that I, I'm going to sell my views to you now mm. as a candidate. Mm. Now I'm going to use your own preferences to sell something that I can see that you all perceive and you're all looking forward to. Mm. So the, that bit of... Uh, uh, I, I don't know how I don't know how to call it, but exploitation mm. can call it exploitation mm. of information to, for politicians to suit in. Mm. Obviously, I can't say that it is a new a new thing. Mm. It has happened even before mm. uh, elections. By the way, there's nothing <coughs> that AI is going to do that mm. has never happened. Mm. Even but in, it will do them better. Uh, no, not necessarily <laughs> doing them better. Yes, it's not necessarily doing them better because no, yes, uh, just hold on. Mm. We, we don't really have empirical evidence to mm. show that it is going to do it better. You mm. don't know how fast a rumor spreads in my village. Mm. Mm. Today, if you put that rumor on on a phone, it may take longer because mm. I've given you information about the the. the internet penetration, for example, gadget penetration. Mm. So you re if, if you put that message on that, on that phone, it may take longer. Mm. But if I just word of mouth, you don't know <laughs> how fast that information will get to the last person. Mm. So th the whole idea is that, especially in our context as mm. Uganda, mm. Re really there's nothing that AI brings on board that has not happened before from, from, from manipulation, Mm. from to, to disinformation mm. to misinformation mm. to 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 threats 
uh, mm -hmm. security. Now here the cyber, fine, but if be prior we had the physical threats, mm -hmm. people confiscating and taking away those, uh, they call them what? Those ballots. return forms, those mm -hmm. ballots mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So you put it into the digital world, it is equivalent to someone hacking into a system and stealing mm -hmm. the data. Mm -hmm. Previously you had uh, obviously men manning those mean looking soldiers mm. manning uh, polling stations mm. s and people would bypass them and steal mm. or even reach votes mm. so that's the same thing that would happen to a hacker mm. hacking into the system and manipulating mm. the, the, the electoral results so to me there's nothing new that ai brings on board especially in our context but obviously but, but, we can but, but, but one could argue that you know, while there were threats in particular villages, mm. it didn't concentrate ever in the hands of a few, like with AI. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, imagine we have artificial intelligence manning all elections mm. in Uganda, and there's no <coughs> agents, there's nothing else, just artificial intelligence. Mm. It concentrates power. More than ever. Mm. At least in mm. Budibudio, right now, <laughs> if your village cheats, the next mm. one might be cheatless. The other one might not cheat. The other mm. might be the worst. Mm -hmm. But at least the average, mm. you know, there's difference. But now... It, it depends on who is cheating. So if it is a, a government of the time, it has the resources, if it wants to do so, it will do so. You can juxtapose it with that. With, uh, mm. just, just, just a second. Mm -hmm. That's the second. So if it is a, a corporate entity, for example, that mm. owns this platform, mm. then it can still do the same. There's that power concentration from, uh, in, from, from a state level, but also, also at a corporate level. Mm. The only difference is responsibility. Mm. The state is responsible. A company may not be responsible. For, for me, that's the only parting, uh, the, the, the only difference I see. Mm. the issue of responsibility and accountability maybe mm. yeah. interesting um th th that brings up uh interesting debate for perhaps another day mm -hmm. as to whether we can trust all our our votes in the hands of <laughs> our brother eric who's a machine <laughs> learning expert and trust uh, his morals uh, to, to handle uh, yeah, but um, yeah, you had something to, to so interview. I had something to say about him saying that uh, it depends on who is managing. Mm. So when, like for example, you, st you talked about power concentration. Mm. So when somebody, like what we need is that we need to know who is going to manage the AI if we must have it. So now at this point we can't say it should be the government or it mm. should be a private institution. Now the question is who? will manage the system for mm. it to be fair enough. But I think mm. that's the role of the state, constitutionally, mm. to manage uh, any okay. systems and elections. Now. The challenge, is, um, the challenge is we are not discussing yet at the level of the state adopting the AI. Mm. Mm. The challenge is we, we are still discussing mostly information wars <coughs> okay, mm. that are not controlled or can be concentrated even outside, mm. outside the country. Okay. Yeah. Another issue with AI, I feel like, though you were saying that the information when you communicate it physically, mm -hmm. it can go faster, but with AI it's worse because, like now with the coming in of internet, mm -hmm. you can post something right now on Twitter. Before you know it, you have more than how many people have viewed, like they have liked, mm -hmm. people have viewed it. And this is not only in Uganda, even outside Uganda. Now mm -hmm. we have seen a scenario where people posted a photo of Trump mm. with uh, a renowned trafficker. Mm. So now elections are based on trust. Mm. The moment someone sees you associating with someone that is not good, mm. trust me, even if someone wanted to vote you, mm. they, would, they would actually just be like, even at that moment, they'll be like, no, I can't vote. Mm -hmm. That's what mm. And now, within, in Uganda here, we know most people are not aware of AI, like people are not, they don't know much about it. Though we mm. have a few Ugandans who know, they mm. know, okay, AI is there. But trust me, if someone went there and photoshopped your face and put on a naked, maybe a picture, 
They are a percentage of Ugandans who believe it without mm -hmm. even thinking twice. Why? Because people don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know they exist. So the first level that we need is first we need to educate the public about AI that they exist. But remember, as you as you educating people how to see AI images, the mm. AI images are getting better. <laughs> yes. better. So <laughs> they are getting better, I know. But at least... Do you think we'll... Uh, uh, this is a question to reflect on. Do you think mm. we'll reach a point? Because we are, our worry with internet age has been misinformation and disinformation. Mm. Mm. But I'm worried that um, as we go into AI, we might reach a point where mm. the information is just too much. Mm where everyone has a naked photo, <laughs> everyone has, I, I don't know if you guys think about Actually, it. Actually, like, there, there was a fear. It comes to much that people just don't know what to trust. In. There was a fear that, uh, <coughs> there was a fear that, uh, that uh, there would be too much fake mm. online, that yes. by the time our children, our grand grandchildren reach, mm. Mm. and they are looking for history, <laughs> eh? they are now confused, they no longer know what was real, mm. and what was what. What what was it? Because now, right now, you can see there are many videos coming on about uh, the Egyptian, what are those pyramids? Eh? Mm. Even Uganda, we've seen the videos yeah, of, of Mwanga, mm. talking. Uh -huh. uh, if you, I'm so, there's, a, there's a channel called Mbozi Tevankad. Hey. They started putting AI. Mm. So, I don't know if you guys get that concern. Mm. But yeah. perhaps we'll, soon we'll not be worried about mis or disinformation, but just the amounts of fakes. Mm. Uh, that, uh, but I'll, I'll allow you to right. conclude as we That's as true. We the break. First, that is true. But now we cannot shy away mm. from AI because it's something which has come and it will stay. Mm. I don't think it will go away. The more we ignore it, the more it will affect us. So the best way is that we accept that it is there. Mm. We educate our people about it mm. so that they be able to know the difference between uh, between what is real and what is not real. Mm -hmm. Though it is not going to be easy, but it will need a lot of uh, us also training on mm -hmm. the parts of the stakeholders mm -hmm. to be able to educate them. So at least when, uh, when people know that mm -hmm. AI photos exist, mm -hmm. they will, at least they will not be, be able to make a lot like decision very fast mm -hmm. according like basing on it. So at least if someone has seen a photo of you, mm -hmm. uh, maybe a naked photo of you, mm -hmm. They will not go straight, if at all they were supposed to make a decision, they will not go straight and say, I'm not going to vote for this person. Mm -hmm. They will first rethink the mm -hmm. whole situation because they know mm -hmm. it is possible that it is not yours and they will seek to know the truth before they make the decision. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's what I think we should do, even if the danger is greater, but let us try to Accept. cut the drain danger which is there for now by accepting the truth that it is mm -hmm. there. Yes. I have a, a simple interjection here. Mm, mm. Um, the, the, do, do, at the heart of uh, the march to parliament mm. that most of you followed, mm. and then I have a relative who was supposed to travel from, from the village. Mm. And then they asked me, uh, coming to Kampala, but there's something we're hearing, but we're not understanding. So I told them, no, there's some, some young people organizing what? Mm. demonstrations. Mm. But if you were on Twitter, I guess somehow TikTok, mm. you had the f you would have a feel of a national event. Mm. Mm. That 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 this is a national event, mm. the demonstration that is owned up by almost every everyone. Mm. And then you'd be surprised mm. when someone deep in the village has no idea mm. what what is happening. Mm. Then it, it, it goes back, I didn't tell you, but th there was a research conducted by one of the CSOs I'm not going to mention. Mm. And it showed that around 70% of the entire population still relies on word of mouth as a means of getting information. Also, by the way, mm. as one way of interacting with government. Mm. That if I want to get information, for example, from the parish concerning the PDM, parish model, Thing, I walk to the chief, mm. the parish chief, and then he gives me all this information. Mm. If, if I want to interact with any other uh, person, even at the local level, I have to walk to them. I have mm. to walk to my chairman. Mm. 
mm. LC1 to mm. get to the information. Mm. If there's any communication that has to be made, for example, by the chairperson LC1, mm. he has to move around the communities informing them. True. So that, that's, <laughs> that, that's how unique our society is. Mm. Then w when you talk about some of these sophisticated technologies mm. and their implication mm. on the electoral processes, Somehow I feel we're overstretching it specifically mm. for the but, twenty but, but, first wave, mm, first wave mm, mm. for the twenty twenty six elections. Mm. Going forward, true, the conversation mm. may be very, uh, very important. Mm. But for now, obviously, I'm not dis uh, I'm not saying that mm. the, the, it, it's not a relevant conversation. Mm. Why? Because you have a segment of your population that is consuming mm. these services. Mm. Because when you subtract 56 mm. from 100, you have a percentage of around 40-something people. Mm. Some of them are opinion leaders, obviously, mm. who are relying on this, uh, on this, on mm. this, infor this information. Yes, yes. So when they're opinion leaders, and just like I'm saying that the 50-something are relying on word on mouth, so that means the 40-something the can still deliver if this message the to ones. the others. Mm. Mm. Yes, for that. So. Yeah, yeah. We have to balance, we have to contextualize the conversation, yes. put it into context, more especially with what we are dealing with. Don't speak from the perspective of the US, you know their internet penetration rate mm. is up there. You don't talk about it with uh, the guys in, 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 uh, in, in uh, what is it called, uh, India. The internet and gadget penetration rate is up there. You talk about the access to internet in terms of the cost itself here. Mm. <laughs> mm. Extremely high, even in the region when you yeah. do the comparisons. Mm. Look at the infrastructure itself. The parts of this country where you go and you have no access to internet. Mm. You know that? That is true. <coughs> and and you, you, you look at all of those stats and then you realize, well, Maybe this is a conversation for Kampala people, not for the my people. In yeah, Mandela. I mean, I'm, I'm glad you. We are going into we are going into a brief break, uh, okay. but uh, I'm glad you've you've given also the critique, which is why I wanted to interject that since mm -hmm. time immemorial, um, it's actually not the majority that create change. Uh, it's people with twenty seven. Huh? 27 guns <laughs> <laughs> and, and the few yeah. uh, co-conspirators if mm. you look at the french revolution mm. the bourgeois mm. uh, and among others and i think this is a healthy conversation that uh, we need to look at in terms of all these angles i think we are almost still at an academic academic level though mm. the nature of technology is that you know the last five years have been more mm. revolutionary than the last 50 combined. Mm. Mm. So we also have to think mm. uh, really fast. So for our dear viewers, I hope uh, you're learning as much as I am, <coughs> um, trying to absorb data <laughs> so I can regenerate mm. in my local hangout later <laughs> <laughs> for, 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 for my locals to understand mm. AI. But this is an important conversation. Uh, stick with us uh, here on Youth Roundtable. We shall be back after a brief break to continue the discussion, especially around the threats, but also um, compatibility uh, with Ugandan society. Do we just need to ban this thing once and for all? <laughs> or, <laughs> and we just go back to what we know? Mm. Or do we continue? I'll be asking my colleagues after the break. Stick with us. Digital rights are those human rights and legal rights that allow individuals to access, use, create and publish digital media or to access and use computers, other electronic devices and telecommunication networks. Digital rights include a right to freedom of expression, information and communication through technology, a right to privacy and data protection, a right to credit for personal works, a right to universal and equal digital access, a right to identity, a right to anonymity, a right to be forgotten and a right for protection of minors among others.
The state's digital rights are frequently violated through various unfair actions, for example, blockage of websites and social networks, theft of credentials, unauthorized use of people's data for personal gain, privacy intrusion, online censorship, arrests and intimidation of online users, internet blockages, and a proliferation of laws and regulations that undermine the potential of technology to drive social, economic, and political development worldwide. It is hence every citizen's responsibility to respect rights of other digital users and to speak out or report to the responsible parties when one's rights are violated. All right, welcome back to this discussion, uh, which is really much of a learning session for me uh, and you as well, from our colleagues uh, that have taken time to engage knowledge uh, in this direction. As we move forward, um, I will just recap that in the first session we did talk about the utility of AI in elections, including some of how it can be used in for information, dissemination, creation, and our brother talked about the possibility of even vote safety, transparency, among other advantages that mm -hmm. could come along the way. Indeed, also many threats were uh, put out, including the potential for manipulation of voters. I think in political mm. politics we call it psychological operations. <laughs> Plant a seed in society mm. uh, that uh, could drive the minds of society mm. in a certain direction. Mm. And these are very great historical success, but also experts mm. <laughs> sitting mm. there just to do that, among others. Um, and among other threats uh, that were discussed by our colleagues, um, given that first session, I don't know for uh, our panelists, mm. maybe starting with you, Eric, whether you think AI mm. is a net good. Is what? A net good for net our good. society. Uh, if, if, if you think about it, uh, there's a negative and positive mm. of each. Uh, let me just make, I hope I'm not going ahead of myself, but uh, uh, first of all, something I should make clear. Mm. is uh, don't take AI for itself. Mm. Take AI more as a utility. Mm. Just as you say that it's bringing nothing new, actually, much of it, it's actually almost not, yes, it has something new to bring in, but mm. it is more of something that's going to be like using electricity, mm. like a back end, you get eh? mm. Enhancing already but existing. But how can you tell that to a society? Uh, if, you, if you study the evolution of human mm. uh, psychology, including language, mm. that in the past people used to say, how are you? Mm. And then they went to WhatsApp mm. and they said, what's <laughs> hey. And then some hey. young people just write TSP. Mm. You know, like yeah. humans are creatures of convenience. Mm. And that mm. has built the... Big. So uh, how, how do you think, mm. you know, uh, is, it, is it valid to think that mm. humans will override convenience for, uh, for, for truth. At some point, all that is possible anyway. But then, <laughs> uh, what I was talking about, the, mm. it being a backward, like for example, mm. the same phone, um, let me say, which quick example I can give, this may be a bit technical, but uh, uh -huh. Word, mm. Microsoft, Word, everyone uses it. It has been enhanced, there's going to be what? AI yeah, right behind. Mm. Mm. But you're using the same, what but now in a bit uh, easier what way you mm. get eh? the apps the cameras right now you're using the same normal <coughs> camera you're using mm. but now it has the eye detection then it what eh? mm. you see that so it is more going to be at that so you will see the same then uh, adobe photoshop what you talk about photoshopping people and what eh? mm. adobe right now instead of going to do all from scratch you can just type a prompt mm. reduce the light then i think that's what mm. So, first of all, let us get to that context. AI is more going to be at the mm. back end, enhancing all the existing what? Mm. Systems already. Mm. That's the first thing. So, enhancing could be, all the negative might be enhanced, all the positive also could be what? Enhanced. Just like it's helping in the security. Mm. But equally, now, if I'm to go into hacking, it is again also going to improve mm. my what? Actually, mm. to add on that about mm. hacking, mm. Uh, the other day I was coding something, yeah? mm. so I noticed there was a new add-on in uh, Visual, Stu uh, Visual Studio Code, it's mm. a text editor, mm. and uh, 
it's called the black box yeah mm-hmm. it's an ai mm-hmm. so as i was coding it was like it was saying what i'm thinking about <laughs> to add in my what mm-hmm. in my yeah, code yeah, like it was giving me what i'm going to add next mm-hmm. by adding to the code mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so which means if someone wants to hack Mm-hmm. AI itself will use its data that it has learned over years mm-hmm. to hack the system. Make a better exploit. Eh? Oh. <laughs> so uh, talk about uh, just the security improving, but also mm-hmm. so the hackers mm-hmm. will also yeah. come. When we talk about uh, the image, what you're making, what also the other side, also people, the news, also we can now use AI for, like, we may, we've already uh, yes, fell into yes. that issue mm-hmm. of uh, the copyrights, uh, the, the photos eh, mm-hmm. using images of people. Mm-hmm. Right now, you can just make an AI generated what image, no copyright uh, attached. Mm. <laughs> no mm. one is going to squeeze you. You see, positive. Mm. Mm? That is now in the news side. You could do that, but equal also, you could make fake ones that are that are mm. you, you could lead them to wrong news. Actual also, mm. you get what I don't even existed. You also. Mm. Yes. So. Thank you. I want to bring the, the question of, of governance and uh, legal implications to our lawyers. But before that, I wanted to get your viewpoint, um, Jibril, on, mm. on, on AI, whether it's a net good or bad. Because in history, mm. uh, there are times humanity has stepped back. Mm. Mm. For example, nuclear, mm. nuclear mm. proliferation, mm. and so many technologies, mm. some that are damaging to... To, to, to the environment, among other things. I don't think this is one of the things we have to just step back and say, ah, to, to I think this is too much. <laughs> we, it might be good, but we're okay. You know? you know, they say history repeats itself, right? Mm. So in the past, humans first test things before they accept. Mm. So I think before we should just back. sit back, so wait and see what will happen. Oh, it won't <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> be too late. <laughs> we, anyway, uh, thank you. I want to bring you bring you in my brother. Um, my contention is a bit different from hers um, and his as well when they say that uh, people need to be educated. Personally, uh, analyzing health systems and all of these things, mm. I think protection of citizens should be the sole responsibility of mm. government. What, what do you think? Including of artificial intelligence, because they're the ones with the power, mm. the intellect, to... You, you see, the, the, the power dynamics, most especially in the digital space, have shifted. Mm. You, you, you really can't look at a state that is manufacturing nothing mm. to regulate something that it has no idea what it is. And it's not even just about Uganda alone. Mm. You, you can see the, the, the kind of battles that mm. the U.S. is running with tech companies from Facebook mm. uh, to, uh, to, to TikTok. TikTok, all of those battles. Yeah, some of them have our own reservations about them. So mm. the power dynamics generally have shifted because you, you, you look at the, 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 the power that Google has. Mm. Most likely, it has more intelligence than the U.S. Mm. intelligence security system mm. because it is Google is in every corner mm. of the world. Mm. I doubt that the U.S. is in the every corner mm. of the world. Mm. So those are power dynamics that you're looking at. So uh, uh, obviously, it is not the first time that you're having corporate entities or multinationals that are even more powerful than states. Mm. We, we have had them before, mm. the oil companies and others. Mm. So again, it is not the first. Just like I said, there's nothing new. Mm. But AI, to, to first of all, let me just mm. finish this point. So uh, w- whereas the state has that obligation to protect mm. its citizens, and legitimately <coughs> so, mm. but we must be aware of the, the change in the dynamics. Mm. Imagine today you don't have an office of Facebook in Uganda, mm. Mm. but it's operating. It has been banned. Well, that's another story. But mm. Facebook is operating in Uganda mm. Mm. and is influencing issues in Uganda, including giving platforms to people to hold governments accountable. Mm. That's how powerful these platforms are. So for me, the people today, you will ask them, 
who would you be comfortable sharing your information with live location? Mm. Someone will tell you I'm comfortable sharing my live location with Google than my government. Mm. Because <laughs> the only way Google is going to hurt you maybe is sharing your information with a third party whose main interest may be is just to sell a product to you. Mm. But when it comes to a government, if I oppose it, most likely they will come for me. So in mm. the context of an election, if I share that information, for example, with the government, mm. if I am opposed to it, they will come and pick me. Precisely, they can have a precise location. They've been doing it with that precise location. They've been doing it with drones. Now imagine if they have Mm. Precise location. Even predict where you're going. Uh, predict where you're. <laughs> so, just, just. I, not to derail you from the the, <laughs> the, the the point, but what I'm trying to show you is the power dynamics mm. that have changed, and I may not have a precise answer, but I just wanted to give you. But that. I mean, um, mm. one thing, one thing I know, government can. I, I don't know at what negotiating level, either as a region, Africa, or government, but um, there's a there's a possibility, um, at least, to call on the companies to hold on some standards. One thing I'm really thankful for is the Twitter misinformation notes down. Yeah, community notes. Yeah, yes. community notes. Mm. Is it community notes? Yes. Mm. Below the, mm. yes, yes. I think those are a bit really helpful. Yes, yes. Yeah, but, but, but you see. But it comes with that level of power yeah, yeah. To, mm. to be able to, to, to no, no, analyze. Some, you, you'll be surprised that some of those interventions mm. do not come from the global south where mm. we are mm. some of those interventions come from big blocks mm. like the european union mm. Mm. for example so for us we are just beneficiaries at the periphery mm. of things so we also have negotiating no no uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> no 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 not hey. really not really at so, least they will they will agree <laughs> to the no, european not, union no, not really so yeah. but the, the the whole idea is that even when you look at how those guys segment us, mm. they look at us in forms of markets. Mm. They're not going to look at you as a sovereign state. Mm. They're going to look at you, the sub-Sahara Africa, they're going to East Africa. Then you have a regional office in Nairobi that serves all of you. Mm. So they're not looking at you in terms of sovereignty mm. of a state. They're looking at you in terms of market Markets. segments. Yeah. Um, so uh, that, that's why that's why that, that the issue of to, power. So the issue to, of power I comes. I want, to, I want to, to to direct you towards. But before that, I think uh, Africa is one of the big social media markets in terms of in terms of market size, but also growing potential. If you look at mm -hmm. the advertising side, perhaps less. But yeah. in terms of usage, I think mm -hmm. Africa is 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 up there. Mm. Um, but to direct something I wanted to extract from you, as an ordinary citizen sitting somewhere in Uganda, what is the current level of legal Framework. protection mm. for, I mean, against threats of AI, to my mind, to <coughs> my democracy? Yeah, the, um, I, ideally, what, what, is, what, you're, what you're provided for, mm. One is how you utilize the space. Because mm. th these are intermediaries. Mm. And th they have that protection mm. against liability. Mm. For example, what I post on social media shouldn't be a business. Mm. Of, of, for example, if it is Twitter, mm. it should be me held accountable for that, not... Uh, mm. the, the platform itself. So you, you look, most of the legal framework that we have at the moment, one, it accepts that these platforms are very important, more especially when it comes to uh, enjoyment mm. of rights and freedoms. Yes, in commerce. Uh, y y yes, and I, I, th I think there's a general comment, or this general comment, 37, something like that, mm. that, 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 that recognizes, for example, even freedom of assembly and association mm -hmm. online. So the Twitter exhibitions and all other activities that have happened on social media are protected under our laws. Mm -hmm. But again, just like I said, we, we, what we have is that, that these platforms 
are shielded away from liability. And the, import, the, 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 the idea behind that whole argument of, uh, of third party, uh, that, that uh, in, uh, IPS uh, privilege mm. is to make sure that these platforms do not become gatekeepers mm. of content. So the whole idea is that I should be able to freely express myself without being censured by the platform. Mm. I can, my government can deal with me. Mm. The platform well, should well, really deal with me. What about more exactly around uh, artificial intelligence? So artificial intelligence, obviously, uh, the, the scattered regulations, mm. scattered in such a way that you have intellectual property laws, privacy. you have privacy laws. Mm. At a continent level, you have uh, it is called the Malabo Convention mm. on cyber se on security and data protection. Mm. It's only in the European Union where they've come up with specific laws, specifically to regulate what cannot happen on social media. One of them, I think, it is behavior manipulation mm. when it comes to electro processes. Mm. That's one of the no-go areas you can't do. But we don't have such kind of a law, at mm. least on the African continent. But what is happening at the moment is that almost every country seems to be uh, uh, gravitating towards having uh, an AI uh, uh, agenda, they call them agenda. Mm. So at least they are making policies. The policies, or something, yeah, something like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you, you have mm. seen recently there was an establishment of the AI committee. Don't laugh about it. Mm. Yeah, but but that's one. Love. Yeah. <laughs> it was actually an expert, yes, expert committee. committee only that uh, mm. uh, yeah, no. we were manipulated <laughs> into laughing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for me, what the, the, good, the good thing about it is at least there was a sign of an initiative. Whether people did not appreciate the committee or not, but meaning the government has seen there's a need. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wanted to bring you in uh, to also boost this point. Um, mm. Concerns regarding, you know, copyright... Uh, AI, you know, how do we how do we go about it from from legal perspective? We know one of the key items uh, is imagery. Recently, in our campaign for for uh, Uganda Law Society president, mm -hmm. <laughs> we had all all lawyers in trucks and <laughs> all over the place. So I don't know who owns the truck, <laughs> the Sebakade truck. But uh, what, what, what's your view, you know, regarding, uh, you know, imagery, copyright, but also copyright cuts across board, you know, sure. to letter and among other things. Sure. Mm. So before I go to uh, to copyright, I want you to, to brief up what they say. Uh, whereas the other countries, uh, the Western countries, they have appreciated the fact that AI exists and they have regulated it specifically in relation to elections. So, uh, like some of those countries we have uh, Indonesia, we have North, North, I mean, New Hemisphere, is it? Mm. Then we have New York. Mm. Some of those uh, countries, they have taken it up and they have regulated it. Mm -hmm. Whereas it is not what is in Uganda. Though we also have uh, where uh, there's a resolution which was made by the UN in relation to uh, artificial intelligence in elections. Mm. So that was in, uh, I think, around March 2024. Mm. Mm. So it was purpose, like the purpose was basically to ensure that the safe, like, there's a safe use of AI in a way that it does not affect uh, human rights, there's accountability, then there's transparency in the whole process. So the only issue is that mm. we as Ugandans will have to sit and wait for what you may be saying. Mm -hmm. And that is always the case. Mm. But now when it comes to Uganda, we have the data <coughs> protection laws mm. which actually protect uh, how you, like some of the, how people use uh, data online. So some of those uh, laws actually help mm. us, like for example, maybe as the the people, then also the, the people who are intending to campaign mm. using uh, AI. So back to the copyright issue. Uh, in Uganda, we have the Copyright and Legal Rights Act. I think that's 26. Mm. So under the law, uh, we have a certain requirements that you, like uh, as an author, you're supposed to prove mm. for you to be able to to show that your 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 
what you have made is protected under the law. But like the most important thing is that the moment you create that that item, it's already protected under the law. But for it to have that protection, mm. that if you're going to register it as your own, there are certain requirements that you need to meet. First of all, it must be original. So the originality requirement requires it to be made by a human being. So when we look at AI generated works, they are not by human beings. They are made by machines. But isn't that um, an intermediate? Isn't the AI just an intermediate, like a pen? No, it's not like a pen because you have taught something mm. to work on its own without my intervention as a, mm. it's a person. <laughs> 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 you raise a very important question. Mm. Yeah. And, and these, these are some of the discussions that are actually <coughs> happening in the space. Mm. Mm. Because you're, you're looking at AI as a tool. Mm. Mm. I can assure you, if, if we have the same tool, AI, mm. and we tell you to produce a certain item mm. it's not that all of us are going to produce the same item mm. Mm. even though we say we want a photo of someone campaigning mm. it's not going to be the same mm. so the, the the whole idea is about even the prompts mm. that you put in mm. Mm. so i mean the laws obviously the most of the laws predate mm. these the, technologies the so you can understand how they are but go on mm. yeah i wanted to bring that up because yeah. i know i know uh, there's a mismatch and a gap uh, and also, on the flip side, right, um, when you look at the Computer Misuse Act, for example, mm. um, what is the protection if I AI generate uh, someone's nudes? Mm. You know, what then, does it then become, you know, that I was abusing someone online? Mm. Uh, but on the other side, you're saying it's, it's not even copyrightable. Mm. So, <laughs> oh, you know. <laughs> so, I just want to highlight those mismatches in it, our laws. It, okay, the laws are here and there, but when we come to copyright itself, mm. we all know that AI generated works are not protected mm. under the law right now. So mm. the people who are trying to use it, for example, if you're going to generate your posters, another person. Will so also just to clarify, yes. also AI generated um, attacks like mm. nudes. Mm. Uh, misinformation, are they, are they misinformation and harassment and all are that. they mis admissible because that's very is important evidence in court yes no they're not, they're not admissible <coughs> it was like and now like the evidence that the people normally are supposed to bring in court mm. are supposed to be real evidence but okay i know that in 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 uh under the the con i mean the electronic is it Electronic Transactions Act. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can bring some of the electronically produced evidence. Mm. But now I am not really, I don't really know. There's probably, there's probably a gap. You can bring the AI generated works. Yes, evidence. yes, there, there's probably. I know for now that WhatsApp messages are uh, admissible, but, yes. but um, it's, it's probably also a gap there uh, in terms of, of, which is worrying because in the upcoming elections, yeah, these, things know, these things are going to happen. Mm. You, know, you can generate almost anything, and mm. it gets better, right? Yes, yes. Uh, every year. Every so, year. how do we then protect? How is it that this side it's not copyrightable? The other side, you're saying <laughs> you can pick someone for creating mm. an AI nude. Last time I was seeing GTA, with mm. <laughs> the speaker, the <laughs> you know. So. Uh. We really need to, the, 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 the thing is I'm highlighting is not that we get it precise. There's a lot of gaps, but I'm just highlighting the, the questions and how mm. urgent uh, they are. Uh, and hopefully that something is being done. In my, can I interject yes. a bit? Uh, in my view, this is a problem you have got in, uh, in, in the innovation space. Eh? Mm. When you talk about innovation, usually it is uh, uh, the computer scientists, what you get. Eh? Mm. But remember, we are innovating for particular mm. uh, industries. We are innovating for accountants. Mm. We are innovating for that. You get. Mm. But you find the people who are making these systems don't have knowledge of mm. those uh, technical art. Mm. But you find when also these people we are making for also are not so conversant with you this know. side. Mm. So really, even when you are making rules or laws or regulations of this side that even also are not so... Mm. So it's I, I really... 
I really, I really, I've always been advocating for uh, more of cooperation between, even right from campus, universities. Mm. Eh? You find that, let us, let us have uh, these final year projects where we do, mm. you get, eh? mm. cross cut. Mm. They do usually in engineering, we do those third mm. group projects. Eh? Mm. Let that group have some people from business, what? Mm. Administration. Let it have some people from law. Mm. And they work together. Yeah. Because now it's, she's making what? But then you, you may not know how, how is the thing made? How is mm. it? At mm. least if you understand how it is really made, you could know where to put mm. the what? Eh? Yes. Yeah. And now also, us, we are also, we, 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 we could make a. We are keeping on also trying to, how they call it? Like now the, the technology is bigger, uh, the Facebooks, what, 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 what? Mm. They are skipping most of these laws. And now imagine they are in Uganda, but they are not regulated. Mm. They are what? Eh? So, first we always go that mm. the loopholes. Eh? Mm. But, but now if you are part of it, you will know how to, where to get the person. Eh? It has put a, a, a firewall on this and this. Mm. It has do this and this. Eh? They also have a clue. Eh? Mm. And then also, the last thing, eh? let the government also take part active, what? Like maybe through, let them have companies or what? Or government owned companies in these systems and what? Mm, mm. Yeah, that, because you, you need now, like uh, if you have a big company, a tech company, eh? government owned, you have also meaning a say in that field, you get? Mm. Imagine Google was owned by government. Mm. Meaning US government will really have more. Mm. Mm. Also Uganda, if you had that word, also you would have a say. Mm. You, you can control something, mm. eh? And uh, we should just not fear that the other guys have gone so far, guys are big right now. There are always phases. Once upon a time, there was Yahoo. Mm. It was what? Mm. There was, things keep on coming, and mm. You can't compare the Facebook of 2016 to Facebook of right now. Mm. TikTok came and also what? And I'm sure there will be someone else that will also come and mm. let us begin our systems right now. It may not be government only Uganda, just make our what? Mm. At some point, we, should, we could also be the ones ruling what and having a say. Mm. If it's government and also it's in that big what, it has more control over data. It has more control over what? Mm. The UN will automatically come and talk with us mm. and we shall have a say. Mm. Imagine now you, you, Google was from Uganda. Mm. Don't you think Uganda would also be considered <laughs> mm. on that? Don't you think? Yes. Uganda will be also considered. I agree. I agree. Mm, yes. So that is my. Thank you very much. Um, mm. Our time is, is fast, bit, but before we close, I wanted to get each of your views on how best, um, what best interventions, you know, in terms of the need. We have highlighted some of the threats mm. in terms of the need as at, as an individual. Where do you see that uh, we can do something before the next elections, but also in preparation for the next five to ten years? Uh, I'll start with you, Dora. Uh, first of all, what I think we should do, and most of the countries have adopted this, of course having a law would be, would be really important, mm. but also if we have a law which protects uh, uh, AI generated work and also protects against the misuse of AI, mm. it would really help us regulate that. But actually, I'm not talking about the, the, the immediate election which is going to happen because we know that may not be possible. But also... Why? Just laws. Okay. <laughs> no, we can have paste. the laws. Hey. We can <laughs> no, no, auto-generate them. No, no, you, you don't have to copy and paste. Mm. Some of these laws that we are going to have, we have to tailor it like, to have, meet our needs. Mm. We cannot just copy the law from somewhere else and have it in Uganda. Mm. The level that those, those people have reached right now is not the level we are in. Mm. Though we should also put it into consideration. That the the, 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 reason, I, the reason I interjected was, mm. I mean, from our discussion, there's a need for urgency. Yes. Um, and, I mean, laws always have amendments, but mm. there's a need for urgency. Something should happen. Something soon. should, a framework. Okay, you know, a framework. Something that we, we need to move Maybe the law will not come out before the elections, but we need to move fast. We cannot throw it into the future. Okay. That's what I'm, I was just highlighting. I guess that we need to move fast. Mm. When we are moving fast, the, the easiest thing that mm. we can do in Uganda, first of all, mm -hmm. is let's educate people about the existence of AI and what their capabilities are. Mm. So that at least in case we don't have the law yet, 
people already know that these things exist and they they could be a lie mm. or it could be true. Mm. So that we don't make decisions based on it. Do yeah. you think it should be a top top priority of, let's say, the Minister of ICT, AI? Now, considering that, that okay, a percentage of Uganda mm. are not even able to, to access. Now, let's, let's focus on the ones who can access mm. this but, information. But do you think it should be a priority area right now? Yeah, in it, governance? Sh it should. Mm. And on top of that, apart from the laws, there is need for capacity building. Mm. Yeah, because if we are now looking at going ahead and having a law, we need to equip our people to be able to enforce it or be able to teach <coughs> others. Yes. So for me, that's what I think should yeah, be done. Right. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Dora, and also for your opinions throughout the discussion. I think it's, it's we should, I, I mean, maybe go and look into what percentage of our budget, mm. uh, <laughs> if any. Is uh, given to AI. We might be uh, talking big yet. Mm. It has a 50 million mm. <laughs> budget for maybe a coffee, yeah? a coffee meeting. Uh. Yes, um, my brother Morgan. Um, same question regarding, you know, in the run up to the elections, but also in anticipation of the future. What can we do now? I, I think we're, we already have. Uh, a legal framework mm -hmm. that can do some bit of uh, firefighting. Okay. Mm. Uh, so, I mean, you can concentrate on the laws that we have at the moment. Because mm. when you look at the, the AI regulation, in the, the, that act that was passed by the, by the European Union, mm. fr fr from the first draft, they never had a clue mm. of what uh, generative uh, AI would look yes, like. Yes. It's mm -hmm. until at the tail end. Mm that they have a shock of mm. when chat GPT comes in. Mm. So they start realigning the whole act to fit in. Mm. So th that's how fluid, volatile this landscape is. Mm. First, we're even at a disadvantaged point of view that we are not, uh, we're just consumers mm. of the product. We are not makers. Mm. So most likely we cannot even foresee <laughs> <laughs> how mm. the technology is going to turn out in mm. the next two or three years. Mm. Mm. So, I, I, in my honest opinion, we are better off either participating in mm. developing, developing these tools mm. Mm. or sit and look, study, then after studying, we intervene through laws. Because mm. the whole problem is intervening with laws, especially on a subject that you don't really understand, you may yes. end up are frustrating even the little good that it has yeah, because the innovators yes the innovators mm. and so on so because i really believe ai can be a very good tool mm. especially for the politicians mm. i know the national unity platform has an app for the moment for self-registration i think they launched it this year but in the previous election uh, ant had an app sp st still for membership registration mm. You have no idea what they're planning to use that app yeah. up next. Mm. Mm. So th th those are all things, but you can't regulate because you're only going to be, you're going to be speculating. Mm. You get me? Mm. You're going to be speculating. Mm. So for me, I think we're better off taking that seat and then watch the landscape. Mm. Obviously, we don't have to reinvent the wheel because the, the, the fundamentals Mm. of this technology are known mm. so we can base on those fundamentals the biggest question about ai in my honest opinion is about the, the about two mm. issues of accountability and who to hold the <coughs> responsible mm. Th that's the biggest <coughs> conundrum Bigger. especially mm. when it comes to those aspects mm. but they're not as easy as as you think, as we, we think. We, what, what negotiating blocks do you think work best for for us, for, is, it more Af is it more of uh, original like Afrinic, uh, Aripo, working in, in concert for the continent or uh, you think as a sovereign state we can also push? No, as a sovereign state we cannot push mm. because we, we have had our losers. Mm. You, you remember that case of Fred Muema yes, against, we, we lost it. Mm. Then you have had the issue of Facebook. Up to now Facebook should be operating in Uganda legally but mm. it is not. Mm. Mm. So, I mean, as a state, that, that demonstrations that we cannot really push mm. for certain things.
then you got a regional level i think africa i don't want to sound like an afro pessimist but mm. really we don't have we don't have those th those blocks that can really push i think the nearest that we can use is the the the, the, the one on african free trade mm. uh, free continent trade is something like that mm. I think b because th th these guys, just like I said, they don't look at you in terms of sovereignty. They look at you in form of markets. So when you engage them, engage them from that angle of markets. Mm. Yeah. So for me, I think that's, that would be the ideal. Uh, all right. yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Gibril, mm. um, what interventions do you think need to happen now uh, in the AI space? As he has said, I think the best thing to do is to take a dynamic approach. Mm. You know? Where it needs us to go first, we go first. And mm. where we need to slow down and you know, see what's <coughs> going on actually mm. before we hinder others from innovating. Mm. Yeah, mm. taking a dynamic approach would be the best way. Go mm. first where you need to go first and slow where I need to see mm. what's going on. Mm. Mm. All right, and finally. Yeah. Eric. I like what everyone has said and I appreciate that that's what we really should do. First of all, what you talked about of um, educating these people. Mm. People should know that this thing is there. How, is, how does it work? What is it? Eh? Eh? Because, like, for example, if just these fake, pho lousily photoshopped pictures, people would fall for them. Mm. How about now a video of someone really talking? Mm. How about a video of Bobby Wine talking something now? If the item will just get his head. Videos of, of Hitler. Mm. Uh -huh, speaking English. <laughs> so we need to really, if they would fall for such simple, eh? you don't say the head is floating, but someone really shares it to you. Hey, by the way, which are our elders. Eh? Mm. Hey, you see this water is up, then you're like, mm. I think what is more, <laughs> one of the dangerous thing, trends I've seen mm. is still images. Mm. Yeah? They get your still image. Mm. And then get your voice uh, prompts. Uh -huh. and something like. Then they lip sync. Mm. No, they don't sync. It. They they, it. The mm. image is still. Mm. They get Bobby Wine's voice, Omo mm. Seven's voice, mm. and then make him make a speech and run that. Voice At the background. Over, a still mm. image. Mm. It's really deadly. Mm. Mm. Those you, you, thing. <laughs> you, you can hardly. Mm. You know. So the voices are now imagine. Unless the video ones, you can see the. Mm. The head is not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the still images are really mm. dead. So now imagine that time just fake Photoshop. That was really photoshopped, people mm. would fall for it. Now imagine this time, videos are coming. Mm. Voices are all here, Bobby mm. Wine is speaking. Eh? Mm. Don't forget the Azawi versus Mose radio uh -huh. song. They even said claim she stole whose song. Even. She really sounded radio. Mm. So at least uh, education is really what? Important. Let them uh, educate people. Let us what? And most of all, as I said, AI is more of like an engine behind. It's more of like, a, you say, electricity mm. right now. Eh? It's in a what in a little what behind eh? helping other platforms. Eh? Mm. AI is much of that. So me, imagine, expect anything that you any gadget, anything mm. is going to have AI at some what? Point. Some point. So whatever even in these academics at schools and what as we are teaching mm. these embedded systems and what talk of AI. Yeah. Tell them it is there. Uh, and and then on the on the positive note, I think mm. the tone is generally fearful mm. <laughs> but <laughs> how can a politician out there mm. uh, myself inclusive I'm one, mm. Mm. use ai mm. in the upcoming elections to 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 boost not to manipulate mm. but to boost your message <laughs> one thing is first of all you can this is this sounds really also again scary a bit mm. because you could ask the ai to scrape it goes on internet mm. and it searches everything about your position Ooh, mm. eh? all his scandals back then mm. eh? And then it ask you to make make for me our manifesto. Mm. It is seeing all that problems in Uganda, that re the reports we have made, uh, mm. what you and what what what. Then to look and see what is the main problem here we can talk about. Mm. Your opposition, what are the scandals he has been in lately in mm. what? Mm. And you can phrase a real bad speech that can really counter <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> see how powerful that is. Because like now meta uh, the one that you're using there, mm. the llama what? Mm. I think you see it's keep giving you links from internet. I Meaning it has access to what? To In the internet. Google. Yeah. Then it goes and checks and sees all that data. Then you start discussing with it as your assistant. Mm. So what? So you said, what about uh, who? What did he, what? Hey, ah, uh, Morgan, Morgan, the last time we know he did this. Okay, now how do we leverage on that? Mm. <laughs> then mm. the thing, eh? You, with your assistant, instead of having a whole kachiko, yeah. you have that one AI guy. Mm. 
it scrapes so the next campaign, pitches. Every, every <laughs> campaign should have an AI guy. For sure. Because <laughs> <laughs> it scrapes. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 I will you should be careful while using AI. It mm. will actually give you information which, like information which is not in existence. It can oh, actually frame thank it you. to mm. sound like what you want to hear. Like thank you, thank you. Like you give it a, like, like um, said, a problem question, mm. like in law. It will bring for you a case which does not exist. It's more with about real names with real, uh, real numbers. Thank everything. you very much. Let me just say it's a technical one. Eh? Mm. This is a technical one. Eh? Mm. That's called hallucination. Mm. Uh, when a model does not, is not grounded on actual <coughs> facts, mm. it's called hallucination. That is very true. As they uh, an example, I can give this is off what, but uh, an example is when I, when I usually use that example. When I was uh, making a quick website, mm. You know, when getting content is a problem, mm. uh, it was uh, a, a tour, tour and travels website. Mm. So uh, I wanted uh, to uh, tourism destinations in mm. Uganda. I searched for the tourism, what? It releases for me very many tourism uh, what? destinations in Uganda. Mm. And uh, I started copy paste, copy paste quickly. Eh? Mm. And realized it was putting for me Nero Rock painting in Iganga. It was putting for me uh, what again is that uh, impenetrable what in Tororo, eh? In, in <laughs> but with good explanation, with even history background of how. <laughs> a, great, a, great, a great political strategist once yeah. said, uh, mm. never let the truth spoil mm. the story. <laughs> it's something you need to <laughs> spice it. <laughs> so, uh, is part of part. so, but yeah, anyway, but, but, a moment, uh, 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 also this uh, a warning, a, mm. a small warning. Mm. So, in that hallucination, it also helps us a little bit, especially in this image generation and videos, mm. and that is something how we can also tell the mm. fake ones and what. Mm. When you're critical with this word, you'll always be something off. Mm. Usually you find like if it's a video, someone's holding the table, the finger is a bit entering the table, mm. eh? maybe has four, five finger, uh, extra fingers. Eh? Mm. Always look out for those. That's like how it's in text. Also, it is in mm. the images. Mm. It's also in the image. You'll always be something off. Mm. It could be the background light is a bit not even. You get it? Eh? Mm. Always there will be something. Yeah. All yeah, right. That. So uh, that's how we can detect the effects. Th thank you easily. very much for that mm. tip. Uh, we come to a close. Thank you very much, Jibril, Eric, Dora, and uh, my counsel, Morgan, for those insights. I think this has to be an ongoing conversation. It's urgent. It's key. There's a lot to learn. There's a lot to share. And it's not so complex. Again, mm. like you said, it repeats what what has been. So thank you very much for shedding that light on mm. AI and the lecture process, but also expanding it to wider principles, among others. Uh, unfortunately, there's been largely scary. Uh, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an optimist. <laughs> so uh, I generally look forward to positive uh, mm. registration of signals mm. in my mind. But I, I think overall, um, AI is here to our guests, uh, and as you've heard, some of the dynamics, some of the principles. Uh, clearly, we do not know everything, mm. uh, but uh, we we do know how to think around it. And hopefully, uh, that as we go forward in the future, we're able to posture right that this is a force for good. Uh, but more importantly, that this conversation has more platform to keep going and going on, especially with the help of our colleagues who dig better into that knowledge. Uh, from me, your host, Okotola, thank you very much. Uh, stick around for the next, next episode of Youth Roundtable, where we continue to discuss uh, pertinent issues on our democracy and our collective future. Thank you very much. <laughs>